He learned that he knew that in order to move forward in his life and get ahead of the curve, he needed to eat what he kills, be an entrepreneur, starting getting paid for what he's worth. You have to first believe in your own personal story before you go out and actually recruit. Stand up if roofing has changed your life and blessed you in a way that you were never imagined. Stand up right now. We're wrapping up a really killer Thursday with Sam Taggart. He's gonna be an incredible keynote speaker speaking on recruiting, and we have a lot to learn from this guy. He's an absolute killer when it comes to sales and recruiting. He did he did alarm sales, I believe. He mm -hmm. teaches yeah. a lot of roof sales Vivint. training. Vivint, that's right. Yep. Yeah, and he's now doing sales training for a lot of different industries, so he's just got really awesome across-the-board strategies to share with people here today. Something I like about Sam is, as you'll see in his talk, is he dives into a lot of sales psychology yeah. and recruiting psychology because recruiting is selling people on coming to work for you. Mm -hmm. So, very excited about this one. And he has such nice hair. And his hair is very such stylish. Nice hair. I remember seeing him last year, and I was like, this guy's got great he style. Looks really do. Yep. He's got great hair. Yep. And he looks exactly the same this year. Yep. He no, he hasn't aged a day. He's a vampire. <laughs> you heard it here first. Or a robot. A sales <laughs> and recruiting robot. That's right. Are you ready to learn something? Say yes. yes. Okay, because guys, 20% of this will actually get retained if you're just passively learning, okay? But they say, Tony Robbins talks about 80% will actually get retained if you get your body and your whole state and you're actively listening and you're actively participating, you have an 80% retention rate. So do we all agree we're not gonna sit here and passively just get spewed on by Sam Taggart. We're here to learn and we're gonna actively listen. Say yes. yes. Okay, who wants to learn about recruiting? Say yes. yes. Okay, uh, my name's Sam Taggart. I have been recruiting. It's funny, I was thinking about recruiting and I was like, oh, I could train on recruiting. When I was 13, I started a curb painting business called The Gutterman, and I thought I was gonna be this you know, door-to-door -door guy, and I ended up, I was like, wait a minute. Why don't I get all my 11 friends to actually go do this for me? So I ended up having 11 of my buddies all through high school working for me. Two of them started their own curb painting businesses behind my back. Shame on them. You know, they bought the little stencil kits for 78 bucks and ripped off my idea. Anyway, so anybody had that happen to them in this business? Okay. Uh, no, so I've recruited since I was literally 13 and managed sales teams since then. I've had, um, I had over 100 sales reps in the solar space in, I don't know, 2015, 16, 17. Uh, and then ever since 2018, I've been doing this whole training and coaching. I don't even know what you call this. But anyway, anybody seen any of my videos or listen to my podcast? Say yes. Okay, cool. We won't talk about my story. I want to hear to help you guys make more money. So what is recruiting worth to you? Where are all my CEOs? Stand up if you're a CEO. I need, your, I need your guys' help. I'm gonna pick on four, three, four people. CEOs, where are you at? Okay, um, Okay, you run Midwest, I'm assuming by the shirt, or do you just wear somebody else's shirt? Oh, Midwest, what's your name? Okay, everybody, while I do this with Mark, I want you to do this with yourselves. Can you guys do this with yourselves? As, as I'm doing this with Mark, you wanna be my calculator guy and take notes? Okay, you're gonna take notes, pull out the calculator. Are you with him? No? Well, you're gonna help him out. Okay, Mark. Everybody write down how many sales reps you have right now. CEOs, write it down. So stand up, you're CEO, I know who to pick on, because I'm gonna come by and pick on you in just a sec. So write, how many sales reps do you have? Dang it, you're a terrible one. Okay, good, one sales rep. Okay, um, I'm gonna pick on somebody else, but stay standing. Who has more, do you have more than two sales reps? Four, okay, what's your name? James, I'm gonna pick on you. Okay, this is the most important. Understanding what recruiting is worth to you is very first and foremost most important. So you're taking notes for him now, not for Mark. Cool, James, got James? Let's give it up, what's your name? Dylan. Huh? Dylan, let's give it up for Dylan! Most important person in the day today. Okay, so James, how many reps? Four, okay? Average rep per sale, like on average they sell, your four guys sell how many, mil, uh, 100,000, 500,000 million? What do they do on average per year? So let's call it 800,000. So take 800,000 times four, times that by four, what's eight times four? So you did a total of 
Is that right math? Eight times four. Does that sound accurate for 2014? Or 2014? Where am I? 2021? It's been a long day. Um, okay, so he did 3.2 million. Okay, and did you do any of that? How much did you do? About a million. Did that count of your four? Okay, so you're one of four. Great. So on average, if you hired one person, one more, you would then be at a $4 million company, right? And if you hired two more, you'd be at a $4.8 million company, three more. And if those guys all got paid 100% commission and they self-generated their own leads, would you be opposed to one more? I want 10 more. You'd want 10 more. Why not 12? 20 more. You wouldn't, you, if they were 100% self-gen, right? Self-gen, paid on commission, you wouldn't stop at 10, would you? Would you? Would you? Because if you had 10 doing 800,000 on average, that would be an $8 million company, right? And how much would your ad spend be? None. Raise your hand if you guys want to learn how to do that. Say yes. Okay, CEO, sit down. Because that's what, like, Guys, we need to understand, if he does 8 million, all of them are paid on commission, let's say they're paid 10%, and I make, let's say, 10%, I'm making 800 grand and just with 10 dudes. Guys, what is it costing you by not being a badass recruiter? Ask yourself that right now. When I got into the roofing industry, it was so funny, I spoke at IRE, and I'm in this thing, it was like the first year I get in the roofing space, first year, I'm like, raise your hand if you have more than 100 reps. Nobody raised their hand. I was like, what the hell? I'm like, uh, raise your hand if you have more than 50. Raise your hand if you have more than 20. 10? Five? And all of a sudden, everybody's like, yeah, that's me. And I was like, what is wrong with this industry? <laughs> so I'm going to tell you a story. I was going out of a company last October. Um, and they had about 95 reps, so bigger than most people in this room. And they asked me to come and train on recruiting. Why would 95 rep company train, have Sam Taggart come and train on recruiting? Because they felt like 95 was really small. Just letting you know. See, dude, we're struggling with recruiting. It's just, it's really hard. We're doing only like six million a month. I can't figure it out. Everybody in here, the problem, this is why you're laughing is your expectation of your company and your level of like good, you're satisfied. You can't see beyond your five million a year when he was pissed at 95 reps, he was pissed at six million a month. So I come in, I train all their leaders, this was us the first time on the left, and um, well, that was our whole company, I trained their whole company. And then I went out like two, three weeks ago to Dallas and they have 300 reps and they're now doing 40 million a month. And what did he have me come and train on? Recruiting. recruiting. He was like, Sam, we're just really struggling at recruiting. Can you train all my managers in Texas and teach them how to recruit like you did last time? So this is just to show you like, guys, I'm telling you, recruiting is the name of the game in this business. Selling is one thing if you always wanna be on a hamster wheel. If you want to build something that's long lasting, sustainable, and you actually have like true enterprise value, it's your systems that teach you and your ability to go scale and recruit. And so I'm going to tell you a story, okay? And the story is actually when I was out there two weeks ago, and this is why I'm bringing this to your attention, is because they applied, and I'm going to teach you what I taught them, and then they started applying it right away, including myself. So we're going to do this through a game. So I need everybody, this is going to be really interesting. I was not expecting round tables. Uh, who wants free stuff? Right? Yes. You guys want free stuff? Yes? No? Okay. Where are my people? Jessica? Jared? Raise your hands. They're going to be handing out a free ticket. Hold it up. So I've got five free tickets to DDDCon. I've got some books and some shirts. So DDDCon's like 750 bucks. So go hand them out randomly, okay? So they're going to hand these out randomly. That doesn't mean you get to keep it, okay? So go hand them. But you gotta, no, spread them out. So one per, like, put one here, put one out there. You gotta space them. So Cam's got some. So hurry, hurry, hurry. We gotta go fast. You guys want free stuff, right? So hold on to that. That is a free ticket to Door to Door Con. We have an event come January where it's the 13th through the 15th. We have 
you know, a thousand people, much like this. We have Jim Quick, Jesse Itzler, Cole Hatter, uh, Tom Billy, who started Quest, billion-dollar company at 60, including you see Becca Switzer, Dimitri, Adam Bensi. A lot of these people are going to be there in January. So it's going to be a dope time, and it's 750 bucks. I'm giving you guys a free ticket. So raise your hand if you got the ticket. Raise your hand high if you got the ticket. Where is it? Hold them up high. Congratulations. You're not going to hold on to that very long. Ready? Have you given it all out? Hurry. Hurry. I'm about to start. Give them out. Are we good? Sucks to suck. That's not going to stay in your hands because we're going to play a game. Ready? So I'm going to read you a story. And when I read you this story, every time I say the word right, you're going to pass it to the right. And every time I say the word left, you're going to pass it to the left. And every time I say forward, you're going to pass it forward. And every time I say behind, you're going to pass it where? Where? Where are you going to pass it? Behind. I say behind. You say what? Behind. Okay. Everybody understand the rules of the game. Ha, sucks. He's like, dang it. You got all excited. You weren't expecting this. Okay, so here's how the game goes. Ready? Forward, behind, left, right. You ready for the game? Say yes. yes. And then whoever ends with the ticket and the book and the shirts and stuff like that gets it for free. Sound good? Say yes. yes. No cheating? No pocketing it? What? Where'd that ticket go? Hey, now what happens if you have the ticket and I say right or left? What happens? You go give it to the next table. What if I say behind and you have it? And what if I say forward and you have it? You just send it somewhere else, okay? <laughs> Figure it out at that point. Okay, we all good? Here we go. There was a younger dude named Spencer Wright. Ah, I think we're getting it. Okay, and you can't, it's a circular table. It can't go circularly around the same table. That's true. He's like, yay. So maybe move it, you know, right means this way, forward means in front of you on the table. Does that make sense? Don't just go in a circle at the same table. Okay. So there was a younger dude named Spencer Wright. It's another right. Who lived on the left side of Springville. He was constantly behind on his rent payment. And nothing seemed to be going right in his life. He constantly felt behind in college and really left him out of any type of friend group praying for something different to help him move forward in life he just never found the right fit he worked a part-time job at the local club as a valet just right of the starbucks making minimum wage but hungry and ready for the right change in life he set out to follow his dreams he started reading the right books, watching the right content, and on YouTube that left him super inspired to be something great in life. He learned that he knew that in order to move forward in his life and get ahead of the curve, he needed to eat what he kills, be an entrepreneur, starting getting paid for what he's worth instead of getting leftovers in his business. All of a sudden, there was a simple DM from one of his old high school friends named Johnny Behind. <laughs> Sucks. Sucky name, I know. Asking if he wanted to do lunch and learn about this insane opportunity. The kid was always kind of an oddball. He had thought he had been, he had been caught behind a bank one day. <laughs> the kid thought Johnny Behind was kind of an oddball because he had been caught behind a bank one day doing drugs or something, but figured, why not? I have nothing left to lose. So he met, right, he met up right away, and Johnny started telling him about roofing sales. Right there, Spencer knew without a doubt that it was the right fit for him. He had never had an opportunity to present itself where there was an uncapped potential, other people that wanted to do more in their lives. His old environments were, were all left playing video games after work, picking their noses and shit, and he felt if he kept hanging with them, he would just keep getting farther and farther behind in life. Johnny made the simple invite to move forward with the company and start right away. Got to scroll up a little bit. We're almost done. So where are we at? Of course, Spencer said yes, and he figured he had nothing left to lose. Where are we at? Hold them up high. Okay, so that is where it ends. Okay, so if you got the free ticket, but the story wasn't about the free ticket. So free ticket, hold it up high, come see me afterward because I need to get your information, I'll send that to you, okay?
If you got a book and a hat, congratulations. I hope it's the right size. Okay. The reason I'm telling this story is I kind of iterated a little bit different. But that day that I trained in Dallas two weeks ago, I simply taught this principle of open your mouth and share your story. Do what? Open your mouth and share your story, right? And so I go clubbing with him afterward. I was like, yeah, let's go hit it. And I meet this guy at the valet and I took a selfie with him the next day when he started. Because I made the invite. And every time, like, it was interesting, that weekend I, we, I actually recruited two people for them because I was like, I can't just talk about it, why not be about it? And within literally eight hours had two recruits because of just, we went to dinner, recruited somebody, and we went to a club, recruited somebody, and just that simple doing and action. The next week they call me and they're like, we recruited over 36 people that week by just simply opening their mouth and sharing their story simply that next week with that little group that I trained. There's people out there, and I feel bad for some of you guys that didn't get this. So what I'm going to do, some of you guys, raise your hand if you didn't get anything. So who likes free stuff? I figure I'll give you something for free. So obviously in 40 minutes, I can't train you on everything on the freaking book of recruiting. So I wrote this 70-page playbook, literally, that goes through interview techniques. It goes through different ways to post on social, DMing, sniping, headhunting. It goes through a ton of stuff, Okay. So if you scan this, I'm going to email you the digital copy of this. Does everybody want that? Yeah? So it's literally, I was like, why don't I just give you this? Normally, I, I made you come to like a big recruiting summit. I haven't given these out. So I was like, well, I'll just give you the, instead of trying to get to my slides or something, scan that, and uh, you'll get a copy of this playbook. Um, OK, so I'm going to talk about this, these, these platforms. So think of recruiting like this. It doesn't start with, hey, dude, you want to come work for me? We're going to like map this platform out so that you guys can become the efficient recruiters that you want to be. Because the reality is when I recruited that valet guy at the club, I first had to be confident in where I was recruiting them to. right? So I said, OK, what are these platforms? And the first one is, where did I find the guy? Well, that guy I found at the valet. And then I said, OK, how do I interview the guy? So I, didn't, I couldn't interview the guy, so I just put him on a group text with this other guy. And I said, hey, Tim, will you, will you, um, will you actually like, interview this kid? And so they interview him the next day. They starred him right away. And then I got to meet him. And, and that's where you saw him in the next picture. But so you interview him. Then they onboard them. What's your onboarding system like? You train them, and then you retain them, right? And if this whole thing breaks, what happens is they come in like a balloon. So think of your recruit all hyped. Hey, you want to make a million dollars in a minute? You're going to be richer than you've ever been, and blah, 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 blah. And they're like, yeah, let's do this. Did anybody start roofing like that? They're like, dude, my manager just made it half a million dollars, and he said I could do so too. And then you show up day one, and you're like, <laughs> just imagine this. This is my office. What company are you guys with? Schmuckers. Schmuckers. I love it. So I get to the office, and I'm like, hey, man. I'm super excited. I want to make my first six figures. How much have you made and how long have you worked here? Oh, long time. Long, five years. And what's the most you've ever made in a year? 100,000. 100, I'm like, OK, good. It's helpful. And I talked to the guy next to him. He's like, I'm still trying to make my first 10,000. I've been here for six years. <laughs> You're just like, oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then he goes, this guy's like, yeah, you know, it's pretty rough out there. I don't really knock everyone's, eh, I don't really do it. And I go to you and you're like, yeah, I mean, it's okay. Like I do this and then I'm a part-time bartender and then I also, and you're just like, oh. <laughs> Raise your hand if that's your company. You show up and it's like, oh. What happened to the balloon now? And it falls, right? So then I get to the interview. And, I get to, and, and, and the guy that sourced me, passes me to the interview, you know what I mean, and, and the training. I'm like, hey, will you train me? Uh, no, I got an appointment tonight. I, 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 I can't. I'm like, hey, Mark, will you take, a, will you take the new guy out? You know? It's like, hey, Mark, this guy just started. Will you take him out? You're like, uh, yeah, yeah, meet me there at like 6, and we'll go out for an hour. That's usually what I do. It's like, oh, OK. Well, they told me that you work a full 40 hours a week, and you know, I'm trying to pay for my kids and life and rent and behind. You know what I mean? And all of a sudden, we just show what 1099 jobs look like. And then the, what happens to the balloon? Deflates. I go out. I get my face kicked in for two weeks, make no money. What happens to the balloon? 
I don't get the right training, the right tools, the right resources, the right materials. What happens to the balloon? So when I talk about recruiting, I teach you how to bring people into this business all day long, but what about where does the balloon carry across and stay inflated the whole time? That's what makes a, a company successful. Okay, so we're going to talk about really, because I, I, I spent three days on a recruiting summit on this stuff, and I can't teach all of that in 45 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach a simple team growth formula. You ready for this? Say yes. Okay. Yes. So the first thing is opportunities. So how, how many people am I getting through the pipeline? So I built a software called Recruitomatic, and that's probably why they have me on recruiting, because I train a lot on recruiting. Um, like I said, I recruited over 100 salespeople uh, in six different states. I mean, I've, I've done a lot of recruiting. And opportunities is the first step, and it comes from these three things. Work ethic, finding strategy, and quality ratio. And that combination is what's going to determine how many opportunities you get and what type of opportunities you're going to get. So there's six branches of recruiting. Write this down. Your circle, your circle, circle. Guys, pull out your notes. Remember, active listening. Your circle, your circle, circle. You have the web. You have headhunting, public encounters, and events. Those are your six branches of recruiting. Okay? And you can find people in all of these different branches, and they're all going to reap different fruit. Okay? And you find a guy, then you've got an expectation. So you're like, okay, I expect X. So my story, some of you guys have heard it, some of you haven't. I started in alarms back in 2008. I show up my very, very first day, train on Friday, and he's like, good luck. You're on your own on Saturday. He gave me three contracts. He said, good luck. Raise your hand if that was you and that's how you got trained. And you're like, uh, I didn't even know what an alarm did. <laughs> I call him at lunch. And I was like, where, uh, I need more paperwork. He's like, do you mess up or something? And I was like, no, you only gave me three. What does that even mean? I was like, well, I sold three. What? Anyway, I finished the day with five. He was mind blown. The next day, or on Monday, I show up to the, the meeting, and all the, re all the reps were like, oh my gosh, you did five? And I was like, yeah, what's normal? And they're like, well, if you could do one a day, that would be phenomenal your first year. <laughs> The next week I do five, the whole week. They simply set a new expectation of what was normal, where when I showed up, I had no expectation. So the opposite could happen all the time. So let's pick on this guy. What's your name? Craig, Craig, Greg. So I'm like, Greg, dude, everyone here, it's so easy. You make way more money than you've ever made, dude. You go out and then obviously it's free. It's a free roof, dude. You just knock their door, hail hit, damage, and they're gonna be like, yeah, well, of course I want a new roof, <laughs> right? Who's done that in recruiting? You're like, dude, it's free inspections. Like, how hard could that be? And then you get out there, you're like, hey, sir, you want a free inspection? He's like, get off my porch. You're like, the 15 cents has come by. You're like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Raise your hand if that was you your first day. You're like, what just happened? And then, and then you go like this lady, and she's like, I'm calling the cops. You're harassing me. You're like, no, I'm not. I'm just trying to do the roof thing, you know? Am I right? Yeah. And then he, like, calls you, and it's like, you know, he got out there at 2, it's like 2.15, he's like, I don't know what to do. And you're like, dude, it's been 15 minutes. Anybody, anybody relate? Like, and you're like, those Gen Zs, those Gen Zs, they're just soft. No, so, no, for real though, like, let's think about it. You set the expectation of what? High expectation, low retention, right? But the problem is there's a dynamic, low expectation. If they would have been like, well, everybody just does one, you know, that's what you should be doing. Then you do what you, they did to me, right? They just, you're never going to make it, you know, it's just too hard. And nobody like you would ever do well. It's like, well, that's a terrible expectation to set. Am I right? Say yes. So there's a middle ground. You have to find where you're doing not too much expectation, but not too low of expectation. And that's the balance of a leader, right? So then you get into the personal story, and we're going to dive into that a little bit more. Personal story is if you don't have a good personal story to change and, and influence somebody, then it's not very motivating to come work for you. You know what I mean? So let's just, I was picking on my front row people. What's your name? Craig. Craig. So Craig, I'm recruiting you, and I've been doing roofing for like a year. You know what I mean? I'm like, well... Um, yeah, I've been, dude, you should come work here. It's really dope, man. 
and I pulled up in my 97 Volkswagen. Dude, I'm, we're making so much money, dude. It's like the best thing ever. Like every day, I'm just loving it. Still living at my mom's, but my Volkswagen's about to get fixed. But dude, it's so dope. <laughs> my story sucks. Like, no offense, Craig, are you excited to come work for me? No. Now I can pull in with my big old truck and I got thousands of dollars of debt and my life sucks and I have a terrible relationship. No, nor do you want to do that. You have to first believe in your own personal story before you go out and actually recruit. Now stand up if roofing has changed your life and blessed you in a way that you were never imagined. Stand up right now. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Yes, this industry is life changing. You got to appreciate that. You all have a story to tell. Sit down. Guys, door to door changed my life. If you would have said, Sam, when you're 31, you're going to be knocking on doors. I would have been like, ah. Oh. But if you would have said, Sam, you're, tw you're 25 and you're a millionaire, I'd be like, knocking doors? Yeah, right. Sam, you're 31 and you're blessing millions of lives every day? I would have been like, through door to door? No. Guys, this industry has changed not only my life, but I hope it has changed some of your guys' lives too. Am I right? Say yes. The problem is you just suck at telling the story. You don't know how to share that. And when you do, you almost feel guilty because you're like, you're not like me though. I'm different. Like, wait a minute. Don't project your shitty like insecurity on somebody because they could be different too. And it's selfish of you not to share your story and your opportunity. And you know why you're not recruiting? Is because you feel shame, you feel guilt, you're scared to say, I'm a roofer and I'm a door knocker. You're scared to share your story, maybe to make them feel insecure. Then you might not have a story yet. I'm brand new. I'm still trying to make my first 10,000 bucks on this. Does that make you not be able to recruit? No. Share Sam Taggart's story. Share your owner's story. Share that top rep story. And be like, we have a rep that's just like you. And he came in, he was in prison for six years, or he was making 12 bucks at McDonald's, I don't know. And then he started in roofing about six months ago, and he's already made 100,000 bucks. There you go, there's your his story, I don't care. Then you have recruiting skill. So you're like, okay, what's my actual technique, my skill? There is a skill to this, yes or yes? And then you have tenacity, how aggressive. Some of the best recruiters, like, I don't have, I'm shocked. Like, I threw an event, I was shocked. If you, wear a, if, if you come to door to door con and you dress in your uniforms, I duct tape it. No recruiting is allowed at our event, FYI. Why? Because people are so tenaciously aggressive where I come from at recruiting that it would become a literally mud wrestling match in the middle just because it's like a bloodbath. Because people are tenacious when it comes to recruiting. So get more aggressive. And then create opportunities to get your people doing the same thing to create duplication. So that's the simple formula. So we're going to role play real quick because we got low on time. So I need a volunteer. Who, 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 I, who wants to be a recruiter? Some be the recruiter. I need a volunteer. You want to be my recruiter? Okay, get up here. I need a chair. Grab a chair. Grab me a chair too. I'm going to steal one. Okay. What's your name? Charles. Charles. Give it up for Charles, everybody. Let's go. Okay, We're, hey, do you guys, do you guys want to hear and see an actual like recruiting interview, yes? yes? Okay, so Charles is going to do it for us. But we're going to pick a scenario, and I'm going to set a timer for four minutes, okay? So we're not doing the whole hour-long interview or whatever that looks like. And I want to see how Charles, because one of the biggest obstacles in this industry is it's a commission-only job. Am I right? Say yes. yes. So it's a commission-only job. Does anybody have a struggle with recruiting with people against... Well, they're paying me $20 an hour and got salary and full benefits and PTO, and you're just commissioned? No. Does anybody deal with that? Right. So I want to see how Charles brings up the conversation of commissions. So, ready? Hey, how are you doing today, Sam? You got to turn on. Push it up. Okay. Is mic hot? Can we turn it up? There we go. We're on. How are you doing today, Sam? Well, just start in the middle. We already got all the way. So tell me about commissions. All right. So we pay 2%. Um, commissions on the, the roof job. Um, you got to go out, knock the doors. I give you some leads. Um, we sell a good product. We're giving the homeowners an amazing um, service. And you make 2%. <laughs> okay. And if I don't sell? If you don't sell, you don't eat. Whew. I've heard horror stories about that. I don't know. I don't even know if I'm a good salesman or anything. Like, What do you do now? 
I uh, work at Buckle. So have you ever have you ever sold a candy bar? I mean, I sell jeans. That's a, a roof is way easier. Huh. But what you if make, I don't? I make two percent off of jeans sales. No, no, no. But I get paid like you know, fifteen, twenty bucks an hour sometimes on commission. Well, the average roof is about fifteen thousand dollars. So two percent of fifteen thousand. How much? Three million dollars. Wow. Okay. Um. So, so I, I mean, make like three hundred bucks a roof. No, about 500. 500, okay. To 1,000. Cool. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It just seems kind of risky. Well, the, the risk versus reward is there. Um, really? The, this is a $300 million in industry. So you can pretty much write your own genes if you sell enough roofs. Cool. Okay, let's give it up for Charles. Yes. Okay. Awesome. High five. Okay, we're going to pick this apart. No, it was okay. I mean, I'll give it a solid three, but. Um, so, um, but it's okay. So here's the problem, right? Let's dive into the psychology, okay? I put him on the spot. He at least volunteered. Shame on the rest of you. Nobody even raised their hand. So when I do the next volunteer, raise your hand. Who's going to do what? Raise your hand. Oh, you're all scared. What did I say about active versus passive listening? Do we want to learn? Do we want to leave this, this? Raise your hand if you're like, I came to this conference to leave 10 times better. Say I did. Okay, there we go. I hope you're not sitting there and just being like, oh, Sam's going to like teach us some stuff or at least entertain us. Um, okay, so the thing is, is people have two motivators. They have their fears and their desires. They're what? Haha, we're awake. Okay, so you have desires and fears, and that's how people make decisions. The bigger problem is we can't seem to convince people to come and work for us. Raise your hand if you're a great salesman. Where are my good salesmen out here? Great, keep your hand up because you're a good recruiter. If you know how to sell, you know how to recruit. Plain and simple. So the problem is, is we think we disassociate the two. With the sale, you're just taking and building the desire, and you're building up pain points, and you're solving problems. Recruiting is the same thing. So you've got to say, how do I find out their desire, and then how do I overcome their fears? Okay. So desires, we're going to talk about this. Raise your hand if you feel like Gen Z and Gen X and the younger generations have gotten a lot more soft. I believe. But the problem is, is they've actually just gotten more in touch with what their true desire is, and it's not just shove like work down my throat, and just, I want freedom. I want more security. I want impact. I want fun. I want growth. I want community. Now ask yourself, does roofing and your job, your positions you're recruiting for, does it provide those six things? Say yes. This job is one of the few industries that provides all six and it does it so well. Am I right? Yes. The problem is, is it's like disguised. It's like this Lamborghini that's camouflaged in dog shit. <laughs> Visualize that for a second. You open up the thing and they're like, and they sit in it and then they're boom, and like, whoa, what is this? <laughs> that's what happens. Like, oh, you're a roofer, you knock doors. You're like, yep. The problem is, you look at my life, you look at all my friends, you look at you guys, and it's like you travel the world, you make more money like this quick, you know? It's like I made 10 grand yesterday, no big deal. Like my girlfriend, she literally is like the most flighty, non, and I love her to death, so don't like kill me for this. Um, but she literally sells like one job a month and lives better than all of her friends and works a total, I, it was funny, she, made, she had a $15,000 commission last week. And she literally hasn't worked in a month. She's traveled like six days. She comes with me everywhere. And she literally, I was like, you worked two days, two months ago, and just got a $15,000 check. That's what you, and I said, how much have you ever made in your life in the year? She's like, the most I'd ever made in a full year was $13,000. I was like, really? Am I dating the wrong person? <laughs> This is the first question I asked. I said, I'm not dating you for your money. I got, I, we're, we're good there. So, but that's what's crazy. Is she has like works one, like two days and made more than most people make in three months. You know what I mean? Um, so fears, let's think about it. So you got failures, embarrassments, ambition, or abandonment, rejection, and success. That's what fear stands for. So it's what? Failures, embarrassment, Abandonment, rejection, success. Some people just simply fear success. Like, what if it works? 
What if what I taught you today, guys, think about this. What if what I taught you today actually got you 10 more guys? He's over here with four. He's like, I'd take 10 of them. And what if you actually apply some of this stuff and you actually go and found 10 guys and you're like, oh my gosh, I wouldn't even know what to do. Production wouldn't even keep up. And then we'd need a bigger office. And then it's like, oh my gosh, then we would crush and I would have so much more money and I wouldn't even know what to do with that money. And then you don't do it. Do you know that happens to people? Way more than you think. What if it actually worked? What if what Sam's teaching actually worked? Because he's done it with 250 companies. So you have failures. So if I sit down with an individual, I sit down with this chick, and I'm like, hey, girl, my girlfriend made 15,000 bucks in two days. She's like, but what if it doesn't work? What if I fail? What if I go out there and they say no? And ah, the rejection, I just couldn't hack it. Have you ever knocked? Do you knock? You don't go sling? Would you? But would you go sling? Do you go sling? No? Oh my gosh. What if I put you on the streets for a day and said, go sell? <laughs> no. Why? Because you might get embarrassed? Not into it. Why not? Sell, not my thing. But the only reason somebody would say that is two things, right? Has a lot to do with this. I'm a nurse, I make X, I'm good, sales is not my thing because of that. Because if you knew and you could write your own ticket and have uncapped potential, you could make a half a million bucks this year and you knew and were confident and had no fear that you wouldn't be able to do it, would you do it? And if you're a badass and you could walk around and you're like, I make 15,000 bucks every day because there are girls out there that I know that do that, would you do it? Hell yes. The fear is stopping you. So in order to have an interview and a recruiting conversation is I have to speak through those fears. I have to understand she's just scared that she might get abandoned by all of her nursing friends. And her mom might be like, girl, you're not getting on them doors. Them be like dangerous. That's how your mom talks, isn't it? I know. Just like that. I can see it. Anyway, so <laughs> that's awkward now. Um, so no, but for real though, think about it. Her friends would be like, wait a minute, girl, you just left your nursing job for door-to-door -door roofing? <laughs> right? Right? And you're like, but I'm going to make half a million dollars this year, said Sam. <laughs> yeah, right. What is happening right now? So if I'm recruiting her, I have to bring true assurance, true security. I have to go back to this whole concept of the whole desire, and I have to let the desire outweigh the fear. Am I right or am I right? Say yes. So let's talk about this. So what you do, how do you do it? Let's role play again. I need a customer, or I need a rep. Somebody come up, hurry, 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 come on. We got running out of time. I need a chair too. Somebody, come on, you're right here, get up here. Okay, and I'll give you a book. He doesn't want the chew. All right, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go over commission. So here's the principle, ready, ready, write this down. Make the good the bad, and the bad the good. Make what? Okay, good, you ready? So I'm gonna tell you about commissions, Phil. You know what's really challenging about our industry? Is we, pay, we, we used to pay hourly, where you'd pay like 20 bucks an hour, and it's pretty good, and like a little teeny commission. Um, and then to be honest, as the owner, I kept feeling really, really bad making so much money that I wanted to start empowering the sales guys and start giving back. And so we switched and gave the option to get commission. And so what happens is we pay about, on average, it's about $2,000 a sale. And most people, when they come in interview, they were working a normal job, maybe forty to $60,000 a year. And that's what? I don't know, three, dollars $4,000 a month. Is that kind of where you're at or, or, or where, want it, where you want to be? And so what would happen is once I switched it to the commission and everybody's like, commission, commission, but it's like they knew and they were already selling one to two to three a day. So then all of a sudden we switched it and they were making, you know, one to three sales a day. So two to $6,000 every day. And so what happened is they worked two days and then they took 28 days off. Um, because they, what, and, and what happened was, you know, they got $2,000, $6,000 within those two days, and they were used to only making, you know, three to $6,000 a month, 
And so their needs were all met and they got really, really complacent. And that's a huge problem in our industry is guys just go out for a couple hours or go out for a day or two and then just take the rest of the month off. And so we're really selective on who we hire because the commission is so good and people make money so quickly that we can't hire people that would just get complacent with, um, with like only make, you know, making three, $4,000 in a couple days. So it's just, it's just a huge problem we have. Immediately, what is he thinking right now? Well, that's not going to be me. I'm going to freaking sell every debt. Is, am I right? Yeah. Is commission his concern at this point? Is making money his concern at this point? No. He's like, no. But, but honestly, we actually, you know, a lot of times people, if they want, will do the hourly. We just laugh because we're sitting there cashing checks all day and we know how much they're listing out on. And we would be happy to do that, but I wouldn't suggest it. Which one would you rather do? Commission. If he says hourly, what do I say? There's the door. <laughs> yes? Okay, sit down, Phil. Okay. So, do we learn something so far? Say yes. So the good, the bad, the bad, the good. That's a powerful interview in a recruiting situation. So here's the real question. This is the real question. I want you to think. Think for a second. I've already heard you like pitter paddling. Somebody said it when I was chilling around in the audience somewhere. He's like, if I could find people, if I could find people, <laughs> Look how many people are in this room. Look how many people are in Florida. If I could find people, ask yourself, are you thinking that right now? <laughs> There's a sea of people out there. There's a sea of people out there. In Dallas, Texas, where I was two weeks ago after doing a training that recruited 36 people. Raise your hand if you're from Dallas. Oh, there's people there getting recruited to door-to-door -door sales every day. Oh. I have a conference with thousands of people that come every year. I have a Facebook group of 14,000 door knockers out there that are commission-only hunters, eat what they kill, and that's what they prefer. Yet you're like, if I could find people. And it blows my mind. You can't seem to get one more guy. <laughs> Ten more guys. You know how many people, I would not have qualified to be a manager where I come from. I was the top rep in 2014 with 3,500 salespeople, all 1099, all door knockers, all around the country at a multi-billion dollar sales company. And you go, if I could find people, <laughs> I wouldn't have qualified to be a sales manager if I had under 20 sales reps let alone a business owner. Change your perspective. So we got two problems, and one of them is it's not an opportunity problem. Am I right? Say yes. yes. We got two problems. It's the frame in which you've seen things and a contextual problem, and it's a knowledge problem. It's a what? A knowledge problem. And so often we blame recruiting on Gen Z, Gen X. And I go, no, they're loving this job. I know more guys under the age of 25 making a million dollars a year in door-to-door -door sales than I did 10 years ago. It's not an opportunity problem. You're getting paid better. The industry is only getting easier. It's not an opportunity problem. It's a knowledge problem. So the question is, if you walk to Orlando, stand up. You walked here. Nobody walked here? OK, good. So if you want to get to Orlando, you came from somewhere. I came from Utah. You want to come to Orlando. How are you going to get there? And how fast do you want to get there? So who drove to Orlando? Stand up. Who drove to Orlando? So the road to millions. OK, who? OK, here we go. Here's the next question. Who took a train to Orlando? Who rode their bike to Orlando? And who flew to Orlando? Stand up. Oh my goodness. Me too. Why? Because I didn't want to ride a bike starting like a month ago to get here. Am I right or am I right? Say yes. 
So here's the question. If you want to make a million dollars in this industry, say, I do. Do you think you're going to get there by being the sales rep? That would be like riding a bicycle. Who are the guys making millions of dollars in this industry? It's those that know how to recruit and do it the right way and duplicate and duplicate and duplicate over and over and over again. Those are the people making millions of dollars in this industry. Am I right? Say yes. The question is how fast and how do you want to get there? So I figured I'd help you out. So one, I sent you guys a playbook. Do you guys all get that? If not, come see me afterward. I'll make sure you get this. It's just scan that QR code. But I did a 70 video course series on it and I'm going to give it to you for free or a DD con ticket for free because it's normally 750 bucks. So I figured whatever you want to call it. If you get the videos and don't come to the conference, then don't come to the conference. If you get the conference and don't get the videos and never watch them, then great, come to the conference, have a good time. So January 13th through the 15th, you guys come out to see Dimitri, see Becca, see all these people, celebrate the real, like, real recruiting training out there. It's dope. Um, all of the 70 something videos that go along with the playbook with exercises and stuff on all the different, like that was like one little third, like one 70th of what I teach in there. Um, it's only 700 bucks today for the recruiting and the ticket to door to con. So that's going to last until like literally tonight. That's it. I'm not going to sit there at the booth and sit there and try to swindle you. So what you're going to do is you're going to get all the videos. You're going to go to this, use the code PR recruit, write that down. PR recruit. Because I will not, or RP, <laughs> roofing process. Good, I'm a little idiot. Um, roofing process recruit, that is your code. If you don't use that, we will not know to send you the recruiting videos. If you don't use that, I won't know because we're having hundreds of people buy door to door con tickets right now. And so I need to distinguish the difference between you guys to send them the recruiting videos and them paying the 750 bucks right now just buying them as general admission tickets. So the way to determine the people in this room is you save 50 bucks and you get to um, get the videos, which we sell online. So scan this, scan this code, it's a different one, and it'll take you to the site and use the, the code RP recruit, RP recruit, and you get a free ticket or the videos or both, however you want to look at it, um, but it's worth the 750 bucks even if you don't come to the conference. So my two cents are, Change your perspective. Take action, open your mouth, share your story, and start to grow today because if you're not growing, you're dying because the new blood is the lifeblood of your company and it's what keeps the old blood alive. No old dog in your company wants to see some new fresh rookie come and kick his ass. So the more you're recruiting, the more it's keeping you alive, keeping you growing, and that's what makes this business fun. And I invite you guys to think bigger, take your companies to another level. We're here to support you. I hope to see you guys in January. It's going to be an epic event. Dimitri has done a phenomenal job at this event. I have loved everything and loved building a relationship with you guys. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it.